Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 20th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of our readers, Rose Security, forwarded us an interesting email on Wednesday. The email claimed to originate from the GitHub security team, and it stated that a vulnerability was detected in one of the recipient's GitHub repositories. In order to review the results, all you had to do is click on a link to github-scanner.com. And that's where it kind of got interesting, of course. This website is not associated with GitHub. Actually, it doesn't use really any GitHub branding. Instead, you just get what looks like a captcha where you have to prove that you are human. And to do so, the victim should follow a quite unusual procedure when it comes uh, to CAPTCHAs. The victim is asked to open the Run dialog in Windows by pressing the Windows key and R. Next, you're supposed to press Control V, which copies the clipboard to that dialog and then hit Enter. What the victim doesn't know is that JavaScript on the website was used to copy a string into the clipboard and this script is now being posted into the run dialog and executed. This is a PowerShell script that downloads another script that will then install actual Maver. The victim is a little bit sort of kept in the dark about this because at the end of that PowerShell script, there is a string stating something about CAPTCHA verification ID, a random number, kind of looks like you know this is related to verifying a CAPTCHA. And based on the size of the run dialog, that last part is really the only thing that the victim will typically see. Meanwhile, of course, the PowerShell script is downloading and executing the installer, which will then install an info stealer. Typical attack against developers. I haven't really followed up too much on the info stealer exactly what it does, but it looks like it adds itself to the registry, does all the usual things, probably steal credentials, API keys, crypto coin wallets, basically sort of what info stealers tend to do. The good part about this is that this info stealer is well recognized by anti-malware. Windows Defender on my test system immediately alerted on this info stealer. So I hope this will help some victims to avoid further damage. Now, we weren't the only ones reporting about this. Uh, I noticed that that, uh, Brian Krebs from Krebs on Security uh, today also uh, wrote about this story. So this definitely is uh, going around and probably going around for a while. I think I saw something from Palo Alto as well today where they stated that they have uh, seen this for quite a while. Uh, One sort of facet I saw that that, um, I didn't observe because we didn't have the original email Uh, just sort of a copy of it, was that uh, the GitHub messages actually are coming from GitHub. The attacker apparently is setting up throwaway GitHub accounts and then using the notification feature in GitHub to send uh, these emails as notification emails, which will originate from valid GitHub mail servers. So that sort of passes some of the anti-spam checks. This is certainly targeting developers and, uh, well, somewhat sadly, developers who at least are security conscious enough to click on a link if uh, they see a chance to avoid some security issues in their code. And yes, we do have yet another advisory from Ivanti regarding the Cloud Services Appliance version 4.6. This advisory releases a new vulnerability. It's a path traversal vulnerability that allows unauthenticated access to functionality. It doesn't really have a lot of details here. What it really does has a CVSS score of 9.4. The good news is that while this vulnerability had not been mentioned before, it was actually incidentally patched as a uh, Ivanti puts it, with the update that was released on September 10th. So if you apply that, you should be good. The bad news is that, and I mentioned this before, this particular version of CSA 4.6 
is end of life and the September 10th patch was the last one you're going to receive. So upgrade to CSA 5.0. And given the history of this tool, this is one of those tools where you should do whatever you can to restrict access to any kind of admin API interface or so the tool offers best you can, uh, IP address, whatever you can, make sure that your attack surface here is as small as possible. And documents released from German court cases have revealed that German law enforcement was able to de-anonymize Tor users in a number of cases in recent years that dealt with child sex abuse material. I've not seen a lot of exact details how this happened. Apparently, this involved some timing attacks, which of course uh, is uh, possible. And uh, then tracing the particular traffic back to the entry or guard node where the user initially connected to the Tor network, then subpoenaing the respective ISP and gaining access to the actual IP address of the particular user. A link in the show notes uh, to a blog post by Isabella Pavel, who did on behalf of Tor publish a blog post basically stating that in this particular case, an old version of the Ricochet application was used that was uh, vulnerable uh, to some of these attacks and that current software is not vulnerable. The conviction actually happened in 2022, so about two years ago, and the investigation proceeded, of course, a year or so before that. And law enforcement recently shut down an unlocking service that specialized in helping criminals unlocking stolen iPhones. Of course, in recent years, it has become more and more difficult to actually sell and use stolen iPhones, given that they often are pretty well locked with the activation lock that Apple introduced So the weakness that these unlockers are exploiting is essentially phishing. There's a good article I'll link to by Ars Technica, Dan Gooden, that uh, does explain how the sort of phishing as a service companies work and cooperate with criminals to help them unlock iPhones. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.